we are going to talk about the payment run in SAP S for HANA. We will first create a new vendor open item via the transaction F360. And afterwards, we will create the payment run via the transaction F110. I will show you how we can enter the parameters for the payment run and what those parameters mean. Then we will schedule a payment proposal and afterwards we will view and also edit the payment proposal. Last but not least, we will schedule the actual payment run and then we will view the results. Sounds good? Then let's get started. We will first create an open item on our vendor site. So navigate to transaction code FP60, hit on enter. Now let's create the open item and this open item we will then use in our payment run. So provide the supplier, then provide an invoice date as well as the posting date and the document type. Let's insert an amount, let's say 1000, calculate tax, but for now we will leave it as V0, so input tax non-taxable. We scroll down a bit and provide an expense account, the amount, let's hit on enter. We need to provide a reference, but this depends only on document type. Then the system informs us that we need an account assignment, so let's assign an account, let me scroll down a bit and a bit to the right. Let's just take a cost center for now, hit on enter, and now it's fine. We can post. The system now posted this document over here. Let's inspect the document. You can either do it in the upper corner, you can't see it right now, as of my screen resolution. You should see something like document and then click on display. Or alternatively, we navigate to slash n fb03, just hit on enter and here you can see our accounting document that was generated. So we have our marketing expenses as a debit and we have our vendor on the credit side. Now we take our account over here, so our supplier account, and we navigate to slash n f110. This is our classical GUI transaction for the payment run. This transaction works as said in SAP S for HANA GUI, or also you can emulate this transaction to Fiori. So we must provide a run date and an identification to clearly identify our payment run. So let's say today is the 3rd of October and identification would be test one. Now you can see here several different tabs. Let's start with the status. On this tab, you can always see the status of the payment run. As of now, the status says that we did not enter any parameters yet. So we must start with the parameter section. Here it gets interesting. First of all, we need to provide a posting date. So this is the date where the financial data will be posted into the system. As you can see, this date was copied from the run date. However, we could change it. Then we have here the documents entered up to date. As of now, it was also set to the third. This stems from the run date. However, as you can see, we could change it as well. So this field will specify up until which date our open items are taken into account for the processing of this payment run. So this means that I could, for instance, say here, I just want documents entered up to the first of October to be taken into account for this payment run. Please keep attention, it says entered up to. So this means that the system will look for the entry date of the document and not for the posting date. The next one is the custom items due by. So you can also use the payment run not only to pay your vendors, but also to collect payments from your customers if the SIPA direct debit is enabled. By the way, I explained you the SIPA direct debit in another video. I will leave you the link in the description of this one. And also discounts here if we need to pay our customers a credit memo. So here we could enter up until which date we want customer items to be considered for this payment run. So far so good, we will leave it blank as of now, as we are just considering the vendor that we used to post the open item before. Now we include the company code 1010. Then, quite important, is this field called Payment Methods. Let's click on the search help. Here you can see different payment methods. So what we would normally do is, let me just close the view, we would go into our business partner slash OBP, select the business partner, double click, and then we would navigate to the role FLVN00, over here to the company code data, and then in the payment transactions section, we would scroll down a bit, up until we can see the payment methods valid for this business partner. So we can see F and T. So let's go back. And over here we include T and F like that. It is quite important to notice that the sequence of how we provide those IDs over here does matter. So this means that the system will now try to first pay our vendor with the payment method T because it's written here on the far left. And only if the system can't find the T stored in our vendor master, then it will take the F. Let's inspect the search held again. So T stands for SIPA credit transfer and F would be a foreign bank transfer. Then 
we need to store the next posting date, so the next date on which we will conduct our payment run. This date must be at least a day after our run date over here. So I provide the 4th of October. This is also quite important, because this field will check the due date of our payables. So meaning that if an item is already overdue on the next payment run, or would lose the cash discount if we wait for the next payment run, so if we wait for the 4th, then this item will still be included in the current payment run. So now let me give you an example. Let me just put it up here a bit for you. So imagine the following situation. Our current payment run considers documents entered up until the 3rd of October. As you can see over here, 3rd of October. The next payment run is on the 10th of October. As you can see over here. Let's now imagine that we have an open item that would be due or lose cash discount on the 5th of October. So after our current payment run. Then this item would still be considered for our current payment run as the system sees that the next posting date is the 10th of October and on this date our item would be overdue because it's due on the 5th. I hope this makes it clear. So far so good, let's scroll down a bit. Over here we must provide our supplier account. The customer side we will leave free for now. And there is another field called alternative exchange rate type for payments in foreign currency. So this we would only need if we are working with exchange rates to translate our payment amounts from a foreign currency into a local one during our payment run. We will leave it blank for now. Let's go to the free selection section. Over here we could also provide further filter criteria to only filter for those vendors we really want to pay. And you can do so by clicking on this button over here. And then you can either choose one of the fields already being displayed or click on others. And then select either that you want to filter by a field being displayed on the financial document, on the supplier master or on the customer master. For now we will leave it as is. In the additional log section I would always recommend you to select due date check, display payment methods if not successful and line items for the payment documents. This will help us later on with the protocol. And over here we must provide our vendor as well, otherwise it won't work. Last but not least we have a section for printout data medium. But this is only relevant if we use AVs or if we use any DI connector to transfer our information. So for now we will leave it as is. Click on save parameters. You can see the details have been saved. Now we always go back to the status section. Over here you can now see parameters have been entered. So far so good, we will now click on proposal first. You can see a small pop-up window where we can schedule our proposal. Normally I would recommend to select start immediately and you do not select create payment medium because we will create a payment medium only after the real payment run. This is just a proposal. Let's hit on schedule and you can see the proposal is running. We can always select status so the system updates the status over here. You can see the proposal is now created. We can display the proposal first. And you can see the system found our supplier. However, there is an exception. Let's double click. Here you can see the line item. Double click again. And here you can see a common error message called no valid payment method found. This is one of the most common error messages when it comes to the payment transactions. So let's close the view. The reason for that is that if we look into our vendor via slash OBP, click on start, double click and then navigate to payment transactions, you can see that we did not yet provide any bank information. So click on the switch button, then let's provide our country, bank key, bank account and generate the IBAN, verify and that's it. Now we can save. Now let's go back to the payment run, navigate back, back again. I changed the window a bit for you so you can see how we can now process this payment run. What we will do right now is that in the upper section we will click on edit, proposal, delete the proposal, like that. Delete the proposal, yes. And now we are one step back, so to say. Then we would normally click on proposal again, start immediately, do not create a payment medium and enter. The proposal is running, verify it. And now we can click on display proposal. You can see now it's green. So we could actually conduct a payment run. Let's go back once. Before we schedule the payment run, you can see we could also edit the proposal. So click on this one, select all accounting clerks, and then we can double click on our line and double click again. And here we could now edit the information. For instance, we could provide a payment block if necessary or cash discounts. Or we can also click on reallocate and then provide a different payment method and house bank we want to utilize for this vendor. For now this is fine. 
Let's close and go back and back again. Also, it always makes sense to display the proposal log so you can see what the system tried to do. And also here you can see all the error messages coming up if some of our vendors or customers can't be regulated. Let's go back and now let's schedule the payment run. Start immediately and this time select create payment medium so that the payment medium will be generated. This payment medium we can then later on send to our bank to actually pay our vendor. Let's click on schedule. The payment run is now running. Refresh. And you can see the payment run was carried out successfully. So one posting was generated. This is exactly the payment for our one vendor we selected before. We can display the payment run log to also see what the system has done over here. Let's go back for now. Then quite important, we could print our payment medium if necessary. But normally you would go to environment, payment medium, DME administration, and there you will find the XML file that you can send to your bank. Last but not least, let's click on payment again. You can see here, this is the document that was generated by the system. Let's inspect this document. So copy it, go to slash and FB03, provide the document. And here you can see what is happening. So when we posted the open item, as you recall, we debited our expense account and we credited our vendor. Now in the payment run, the vendor is debited as you can see. So the vendor account itself is cleared and the bank account is credited. So in the end, we have an expense and this expense was paid via our bank account. This marks the end of the video. It took a lot of effort, so I would really appreciate if you subscribe to the channel and also activate the bell. See you next time.